Hello, it is Throwback Thursday, February 6th, 2020. Steve Cypress here in my uh, study, my library, where I have uh, on the shelf, you might notice a bunch of rhinos behind me. Uh, first time I was introduced to the whole concept of Scott Alexander's Rhinoceros Success is when I went to work for a door-to-door -door sales company back in 1991. And uh, it, uh, as people were budding entrepreneurs and leaving the rat race of working for somebody else, uh, they were introduced to Scott Alexander's book with the rhino being the symbol of the entrepreneur. Won't get into that here. You can go to uh, my podcast, actually, rhinodaily.com, and you can click on a link there. It'll tell the story of why the rhino. And I, to this day, have a collection, which I started back then, a couple of years after I started with the company, about a year or so after, and uh, I now have over a thousand rhinos in my collection. But anyway, one of my fellow rhinos, uh, Toby Mersinger, was here last weekend. Uh, had not seen him in about 25 years. Met him and actually uh, uh, shared an apartment with him for a few months in Newark, Delaware. And then I think uh, we were together again in Miami, Florida somewhere. Uh, my memory is faded about all the different offices I moved around, troubleshooting, opening, closing, learning, teaching, helping, all kinds of stuff through my nine years with that door-to-door -door sales company. Um, but uh, we were, of course, reminiscing about the good old days and all kinds of war stories from the field, going out and doing door-to-door -door sales with no appointments, no matter what the weather, all different products, some were great, some were hilariously terrible, you know, getting told, get a real job, what are you doing, get out, getting arrested, getting robbed, uh, you know, everything happening, positive, negative, and uh, we just had a lot of fun for a couple of days. And I also um, said, you know, I think if I go into my closet, where now I, I can't even remember the last time I wore a tie, I think I went to a wedding over the summer and a, and a funeral uh, uh, earlier this year, and uh, I think the wedding was last summer even, and I think those are the last two times I wore a tie, like t twice in the past two years, but I still have a whole bunch of ties in my closet, I guess, for whatever occasion, and I remember that a few I thought I had from uh, ties that we sold, door to door. I mean, we sold all kinds of things, so basically everyday items, household items, kitchen items, office items, toys, kids stuff, cookbooks, things that you could sell mass quantities of, and lots of people needed them, and we sold them at ridiculously low prices. Got the stuff made overseas and shipped to us, and then we could just, you know, sell 100, 200, 300 items a day out on the street to anyone that would look at our stuff and say, man, that's a good deal, give me one. And so uh, there was, for a time, an entire division of the company which sold fashion items. It was only around for a short time, but in... Another division uh, where we just cleared stuff out for low prices, and they call that clearance. It was the original, just the entire company until they started all these other divisions. And um, uh, we had a bunch of fashion items. We had watches and wallets and belts and socks. We even sold suits <laughs> for a short time, shirts, uh, all kinds of stuff. And one of the things we sold were ties. And I said, let me check into my closet, and sure enough, came out with a few of these ties with the brand name as all those fashion items were from the watches to the belts, the socks, the suits, the ties, all that kind of stuff. The brand name was Fondini. Fondini. And people would go like, wow, never heard of that. Is that some famous Italian, you know, fine fashion brand Fondini? Well, the founder of the division, one of the co-founders, actually the first company was started in Canada, and he was the first person to expand to the United States back in the mid-80s. Uh, his wife's name, Abby Roth, his wife's name was Fonda. And so he just named the fashion brand Fondini. So there you go. There's a business lesson there. Uh, if you want to name your company like, you know, perhaps like, you know, Joe's Pizza, uh, Joe's you know, might not be the best name for a pizza place, but what if you called it, uh, you know, Josefina's Pizza, right? So in this case, Fonda doesn't sound like a great brand name of fine imported silk 
fashion items, but Fondini. Ooh, I've never heard of that. Is that like Bernini? Is that like Gucci? Is it, That's Fondini. Come on. We just look at them and go, it's Fondini. And they go, oh, I guess I never heard of it. You know, and we had, and ties like this are like 40 bucks in the store and we got them for 10 bucks or five bucks or whatever. And so here's a few that I found. Now, the first one is fairly normal. Fairly normal, although it dates to the, you know, the mid 90s there. Uh, fairly normal design. The width is for mid 90s and all, but that's fairly normal. You can see on the back, the you can't see it if it's ripped off like that, but there it is, the Fondini Fine Imported Silk brand name. So we sold that tie on the streets for five or ten bucks or whatever we sold it for. Then we get into the really fun designs. And we loved, we had to, you know, we didn't have to, but we wore ties every day. So we, I personally loved wearing ridiculous ties. And here's one that is uh, like pool balls with a, with a rack, billiards, right? So that's a fun one. A little maroon color there is the main color. And again, it is Fondini Fine Imported Silk. Doesn't say anywhere on there I looked uh, where it's imported from. So the people think, oh, it's Italian, imported Italian silk. Well, no, of course not. It was imported from China, or Malaysia, or wherever the heck you could get stuff as cheaply made as possible. I saved the best one for last. Another, when I saw this on my, my, uh, my uh, hanger, my rack of ties that I brought out, I was looking through them with Toby, and I said, like, as soon as I saw this one, I said, now that just looks like a like a crazy Fondini tie that we wore in those days. And sure enough, this is a like gold watch and uh, Rolls Royce keychain you see with the RR. And, you know, it's all about like, oh, look how wealthy and successful we're all going to be when we get out of this door-to-door -door sales and start getting to our office where we really could. I mean, if you did any decent job at all, you were profiting about a thousand bucks a day if you didn't... Uh, you know, uh, have a lot of fun and live large like a, a lot of young nouveau riche types do and like spend it all and blow it all. Um, but anyway, there it is again, the Fondini fine imported silk tie. And the reason I saved this one for last is because I, I decided to just do a quick search on the computer for Fondini tie. And sure enough, I saw a photo of the billiards tie and that was for sale on eBay for like eight or 10 bucks. And then I saw this one for sale on some website, and it says pre-loved. So there's a business lesson there. $16. I'm like, wow, I got a pre-loved one. So pre-loved. So there's a business lesson there, as if there's a business lesson in any of this. I'm just kind of having fun, and it's an inside kind of video to some of my old buddies that I'm connected with here on Facebook where I'm recording this live on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash smallbizhelp, B-I-Z, smallbizhelp. You can go there and you can interact with me live on my videos whenever I come on at some point that I've done every day for the last two years and 11 months. Next month will be a third year anniversary of doing a Facebook Live video every single day. Or maybe you're watching this on YouTube or on the Rhino Daily Podcast or the Rhino Daily Blog or through Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, you know, where I put this all over the place, all kinds of pages on Facebook and everything. But anyway, um, where was I? There's a lesson. So we have a naming lesson, and now we have a lesson. Uh, what was the second lesson? I forgot already because I'm just having so much fun thinking back to those days. Um, but, uh, oh, yes, it was about the word pre-loved. So this website, instead of calling it used, it just doesn't sound great, call your stuff pre-loved. You know, cars, uh, I remember a few years ago, started hearing the word pre-owned, pre-owned, uh, instead of just, you know, used car. Used car salesman has all kinds of negative connotations and used car, used anything. Who wants a used anything but a pre-owned? Ooh, these are certified pre-owned Audi. It's a certified pre-owned Mercedes. Oh, you mean it's a used car? No, 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 it's a certified pre-owned. Certified pre-owned? You mean the second it gets off the lot, it's already not new anymore. It's used or pre-owned. So I don't know what this, but there's a naming lesson called it certified pre-owned instead of just used or pre-loved. Like this internet salesperson made it up 
And then she priced it, or he or she, I think it was a she, she priced it at $16. I don't know where she came up with that. Uh, I could sell you a whole bunch of them for that back in the days where you sold them for five bucks or whatever. Um, but that'll do it for Throwback Thursday. The Fondini tie, pre-loved. This one, you can find it on the computer as I record this in early February of 2020. You can find this, uh, this gold watch. Oops, where's the camera? The gold watch and the Rolls Royce keychain Fondini tie, $16. So if I hold on to this for another 25 years, uh, maybe it'll go up to $30. Uh, or maybe I will just finally get rid of them, with my, which my beautiful wife, Michelle, would love. And I see that my <laughs> beautiful wife, Michelle, is here. Just came on and says, nice. As in just a little bit of sarcasm. And uh, on that note, that'll do it. For Throwback Thursday, I will catch you tomorrow on Foundation Friday. We're going to rejoin our multi-part series on J. Paul Getty's fantastic book from about 50 years ago, 55 years ago, called How to Be Rich. We'll be teaching a lesson out of that from the person who was at the time the richest person on earth. So I hope you'll join me then. Over now for today. Bye-bye.